Good morning and welcome to Ox Hill Baptist Church as we gather together this morning on this Pentecost Sunday. It is also the Sunday in which we are celebrating our graduates of 2020. We are grateful for this time that we have together to worship together. And we hope that you were able to enjoy time in Sunday school this morning via Zoom. We have several classes that we offer. Hope you were able to enjoy that time with your Sunday school class this morning. If you are not part of a class, uh, you can see a list of them in the Connect or contact the church office and we'll be happy to get you involved in one of those classes. We also have the Sunday school curriculum available for the coming weeks. Next Sunday starts a new quarter and if you have not picked up your Sunday school literature and you'd like to have it delivered to you or pick it up, please contact Helen Hall and we will do our best to get it to you during the course uh, of this week. We also want to remind you that this week we are taking a week of Sabbath here at the church. Sabbath is a, a reminder to us to rest and lean into God's goodness and grace. So we are not having many of our regular activities on, on Zoom and otherwise this week. The youth will not meet tonight. Uh, the women's Bible study will not be meeting tonight. And our Wednesday night activities are canceled as well. Uh, there will be a deacons meeting on Monday night, but that's the only meeting that is going to occur this week. Everything else has been pushed back to the following uh, weeks uh, to come. So please um, also be mindful that uh, this Friday in the Connect, there went out a, uh, uh, some information about a week of Sabbath for you, some prompts, some things for you to consider re reading or songs for you to, to sing or uh, passages, uh, uh, quotations for you to read as well. So please take a look at that information for each day uh, this week of Sabbath that we have before us. Um, and our prayer and our hope is that during this week you are drawn closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The one thing that will be going on this afternoon, however, is our graduate parade. Meet here at 3 o'clock at the church and we will give you uh, instructions and directions as to where to go and, and how to get from one house to the next. Uh, we do want to, you to consider maybe decorating your car, but make it to where it's very easy for you to put out the decorations and bring in the decorations so that we are not stop, stopped for long periods of time. So consider how that can be easily done for you if you are participating in the graduate parade today, be here at three o'clock as we will be leaving to, to go and just uh, encourage and tell our graduates we are, we are proud of them for this accomplishment. Beginning June 10th, Dr. Tony Cartledge will be with us on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. via Zoom. He is going to be leading us in Bible study uh, titled uh, Journey uh, in Genesis. And he is going to lead us through seven sessions in Genesis. He has written extensively about the book of Genesis. And so we are excited about his leading and guiding us in this endeavor. We also want children and even adults to participate in the Bible reading and activity program provided for you in the Connect. If you would like to do that, just download that document and go through the Bible reading and the activities uh, and once you've completed 12, just email Sarah and let her know, and we will have prizes available to those who complete uh, that activity. This summer, uh, unfortunately, we will not be having our regular vacation Bible school, but we are going to be providing a virtual Bible school. Uh, we will be having content sent out to uh, individuals and posted online so that you can participate in a virtual Bible school from home. And so we have a lot of information and, and recordings that we are going to put together, some additional things that you may want to do as well. There's going to be some crafts and some music and Bible stories, all of it uh, packaged to you to come to you for you to do at home with your children. So please consider doing that uh, this summer uh, as we are not having a traditional Bible school, but a virtual Bible school, and we are excited about that. 
And lastly, I want to thank you for your generosity to the church. We thank you for your willingness to give. Uh, if you are un, 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 do not know how to give, uh, you can do so online. You can give through PayPal. You can also mail a check to the church, P.O. Box 220536, Chantilly, Virginia, 20151. Or you can have an automated check sent from your bank. Uh, we have many options for you there. But once again, thank you for giving. And uh, we appreciate your generosity. Keep updated in your connects that are going out every Tuesday and Friday. And uh, keep uh, the, up, the most up-to-date information we have will be sent to you. So please keep an eye on that. Once again, thank you for joining us this morning. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for this time that we have to worship together. Good morning. Today is a very special day as we take time to honor and recognize members of our church family who graduated from high school or college this year. This is a big milestone for each one in their own personal journey. Let us celebrate together the graduates of the class of 2020. Jeffrey Anderson, graduated from Northern Virginia Community College in December with an associate degree in business administration. Jeffrey is a new recruit in the Fairfax County Criminal Justice Academy. Kyle Bean is graduating from Chantilly High School and will be attending Virginia Tech in the fall. Caleb Elias is graduating from Chantilly High School and will be attending George Mason University in the fall. Becca Lamb is graduating from Westfield High School and will be attending West Virginia University in the fall. Cole Lamb is graduating from Westfield High School and will be attending Davis Career Center in the fall. Katie Lamb graduated from the University of Mary Washington with a Bachelor of Science. Erica Luckett graduated from American Public University with the Bachelor of Science in Health Information Management. Grant McKinley graduated from Virginia Tech in the fall of 2019 with the Bachelor of Arts in English Creative Writing. Grant is currently enrolled at Virginia Tech and is working on his Master's of Education in English Education. James McKinley is graduating from Freedom High School and will be attending Virginia Tech in the fall. Jessica Wu is graduating from Northern Virginia Community College Loudoun Campus with an associate degree in computer science. Jessica will be leaving in June to further her studies in Taiwan. Jessica, we will certainly miss having you here at Ox Hill and wish you nothing but the best, and we are excited for your future in your next chapter. Your Ox Hill family is so proud of each and every one of you for all of your hard work and dedication. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. We look forward to continuing to walk this journey beside you and support you in all of your future endeavors. 
Let us pray. Father God, we humbly thank you for each of your blessings. We thank you for the graduates and their families. We thank you for their support system who lifted them up in a time of need and are celebrating with them now. Thank you for the perseverance to continue during a long journey. We ask for your everlasting presence in the next chapters for the graduates. Lord, let each one feel the love and support of this church family. And most importantly, you, Father. For when we trust in you with all of our heart, we know our paths will be straight. We thank you and we love you, Father. For it is in your name that I pray. Amen. God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. Will you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we gather to worship you and to thank you for all that you have done in our lives. We thank you for counting us worthy to serve you and know you as the only true God. Accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Today is the day that you have made, and it's a beautiful day, and we rejoice, and we're glad. Thank you for our families and our church. Among us, dear Lord, there are many hurting and needing people. We lift them up to you and ask that you bless them, help them, and heal them. May your peace fill their hearts. We ask that their needs be fulfilled according to your will. We also pray that you would use us to help them in any way we can. Open our eyes and make us aware of the opportunities we have to bless others in need. Help us to not be selfish. Help us to share. 
All that we have is yours, and we surrender it now to you. As we continue in this service, fill us with your unlimited joy and refresh our spirits. Let others see you through us. Amen. Good morning. This morning, I need your help. I have this flashlight, but it's not working. See? No light. I'm pressing the button, but it's just not working. Anybody got any ideas about what's wrong with it? Huh. Let's see. Down here. Oh, I think I found the problem. It's missing batteries. I have some extra right here. Let's put those batteries in. See if they do the trick for this flashlight. Are you ready? See if it works. Count with me. One, two, three. Ha! We have light. It works. See, this flashlight didn't work without power, right? The batteries give it power, and then it can light up. Well, today we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Can you say Pentecost with me? Pentecost. And Pentecost Sunday is the day that we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God with us. It's God living in us. Last week we talked about the ascension. So when Jesus went up into heaven, he promised his disciples that he would send the power of himself to us, to help us through life. So God sent the Holy Spirit on Pentecost and it was an amazing day because people all around could tell that there was power in the presence of God. And that same power, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, lives within you. The power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God lives in you. The Holy Spirit is what gives us power. Just like this flashlight doesn't really work right without its batteries, its source of power. We as followers of Christ, we can't work to the fullness of our capability without the power of the Holy Spirit. So I encourage you, after you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to embrace the power of the Holy Spirit and know that you can do mighty and awesome things because the power of God lives within you. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, may our lives show your power. Amen. Today, I will be reading Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Hear the word of the Lord. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. 
Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
I love space. And I'm not talking about space that people give me in life. I'm talking about outer space. I've always had a fascination with outer space. I, I've always stared at the stars and the moon and, and thought about the wonders and the mysteries that were out there. And I've had a fascination, really, with astronauts. I, I've read extensively about several different astronauts, and, and, and I think astronauts are some of the coolest people in the world. I couldn't imagine doing what they have done. And, and, and I was able to meet an astronaut. Bill MacArthur was his name. Uh, Bill MacArthur actually grew up uh, just outside of Red Springs in the last place I served. He grew up there, and he went on to, to study at uh, uh, Georgia Tech, and he entered into the, the military and ultimately became a NASA astronaut. And on several occasions, he would come back to Robeson County, and I was able to meet him at one time, and we spoke just briefly for just a couple of minutes, and, and it, it was incredible to hear his stories of uh, the amounts of time that he had spent on the International Space Station. We were able to ask him questions, and he told us of the, the long days and nights, if you call them days and nights in the International Space Station that he spent up there for months on end. It's incredible to, to hear the story of him getting from the Earth uh, projected on a shuttle out to the International State Space Station. He talked about the force that it took and, and how he had to trust uh, the researchers the engineers and the technicians, to make all of that happen for him to be able to be an astronaut and live at the International Space Station. I, I imagine his job uh, was so dependent on so many others that there were moments maybe he questioned things or thought differently about things, as probably most astronauts do. But at the end of it, he knew to launch from that place in the shuttle, Cape Canaveral, to get to the International Space Station. He had to trust in all of those that had done the work so that they had enough power, stability, effectiveness to be able to get to the space station. Some of our graduates are about to set off on a new adventure in life. They're about to launch, may we say. But they're not alone in their launching. Many of us launch to new endeavors and new adventures. And the question that I have for us today, are you ready to launch? And by ready, I mean are you ready in your faith? The text that we had read this morning comes from Acts chapter 2. And this is the day of Pentecost. The day uh, that may we call the church's birthday. The day in which the Holy Spirit comes and dwells amongst the people. The Spirit came like fire from heaven. And people were talking, and it sounded like babble to other people. But every time someone talked, everybody was able to understand in their own language. And here in this passage of Scripture, we are reminded of how the Spirit moved amongst the people. And then Peter addresses the crowd with the good news of Jesus Christ. And what was going on was a matter of God dwelling amongst the people. This passage of scripture is a fascinating one to look at. But we have to begin when we think about getting ready to do things, as this was the beginning of the church here in Acts chapter 2, of what they needed to do to be ready to launch so that there was not a failure of the early church. And the first thing we have to realize is that all we do is dependent upon the Spirit of God. 
Too often we are self-dependent. We think that we've got this. I can do this. I, I've, I'm smart enough. I have enough information. I, I, I have enough reason. I have enough rationale. And we try to put it together ourselves. But in this passage of scripture, all that was done was dependent upon the spirit of God. The entire passage is dependent on the Holy Spirit dwelling in the hearts and minds of God's people. The most important decision any of us will ever make is to believe in God and his son Christ Jesus and allow the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. None of it works without us first allowing the Spirit to dwell in us. We cannot launch with the power of the Holy Spirit as an individual or as a church without the Spirit being a part of it. We must trust God and the Spirit of God. It is what fuels us for our life of faithfulness. But as we know the Spirit comes into us now, and we have to have the Spirit to do, we have to have the fuel of the Spirit, and it's all dependent upon the fuel of the Spirit, what else do we learn from this passage of Scripture? Some of this is practical advice for us to consider, not just for our graduates, but also for us who live a life of faith. And first... To, to make sure that we don't have a failure to launch, we need to be willing to wait. From the ascension to the Pentecost, the disciples had to wait. Remember the passage of scripture we talked about last week, that they were told to go to Jerusalem and wait for the Spirit to come. They had to wait about 10 days for the Holy Spirit to come. And I imagine that it wasn't a, an easy wait either. They were excited. They were probably excited about the next step to come. They were probably telling stories about Jesus and, and, and thinking about all the wonders and the mysteries of things that Jesus got to do. And they were like, and he told us the spirit was going to come and we can't imagine what it's going to be like when the spirit comes and, and what the spirit is going to lead us to do. And, and there was a, some excitement and and they were ready to launch. They were ready to go. They wanted to go, but they needed to wait. Just this week, SpaceX was about to send two astronauts to the International Space Station, but it was postponed. They had to wait. See the the weather and the circumstances surrounding the launch were not quite right, so they postponed it. They waited a few more days. After these astronauts had already waited a long time, they had been in quarantine from everybody and anybody for a long time. They had uh, testing over and over again to make sure that they're ready for this, and the day approaches, and they say, oh, it's time to wait because we want this to be right. We want it to be done right. It needs to be in the right circumstances with the right weather. So they had to wait. The disciples waited 10 days in our passage of scripture. And in our mind, maybe you're saying today, well, after all this quarantining, 10 days doesn't sound too bad. But let's look at other passages of scripture and other stories in scripture in which people waited. Think about Abraham and Sarah. From the moment they were told that they were going to be the father and mother of many nations, they waited 25 years for Isaac to show up. Joseph waited 13 years in prison and in Potiphar's house before he was made overseer by the Pharaoh. Moses, Caleb, Joshua, and the people of Israel had to wait for 40 years wandering around the wilderness before entering the promised land. Job waited and endured much suffering for, for months, it says in Job 7. David waited 20, uh, 15 years excuse me, from the anointing until the moment he was appointed the king. Daniel waited 21 days as he prayed and fasted before a breakthrough occurred. And what about Jesus? 
from the moment he was born to the moment he actually started his ministry, 30 years passed. Jesus also waited an uh, extra time, an extra few days, we can say, before he showed up to Mary and Martha and Lazarus had subsequently died. Paul went to Arabia and waited for three years before he was ready to return to work as a missionary. The Bible is full of stories of waiting. You may not want to hear it this morning, but waiting is part of the life of the faithful. However, we trust and believe that during the waiting, God is still working and moving in the world. I know it's tough to wait. I know waiting is not easy. We live in what some people call the microwave generation, where everything you want you can receive quickly. But since uh, I first heard that phrase many years ago to today, it seems as if the world has gotten even faster. Even in the midst of a global pandemic, the world around us is just speeding by. Just think about it. If we have to wait for some of the necessities in our life, how troubled we are by it. Paper towels. Toilet paper. We are troubled by having to wait for such things. We want it now. And not just do we want it now, but we want enough for now and for the next how many ever weeks we feel like we need to have it. Some of us need to heed the word of God and get in touch with our patience so that we can wait. Psalm 27, 14 says, Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Let us not get ahead of God. Let us be patient and wait for when the moment is right for us to launch into the endeavor that God has laid out for us. So may we have the fruit of the spirit of patience so we can wait. And as we wait, we trust in God. But this passage goes on to talk a little bit more about some things that maybe we can do so that we don't have a failure when it's time to launch. The second part of this passage that I think we need to embrace is that we need to put ourselves in the right place and with the right people. The disciples stuck together in Jerusalem in their waiting in the same manner they stuck together in their life. And I'm sure they had some many conversations and they speculated many times about what was going on. But no matter what was going on, no matter their questions and the circumstances, they stuck together, they, they gelled together, they bonded together, they waited together and relied on God together. And they stayed exactly where they were supposed to stay in Jerusalem. Many of us need to ask ourselves this question. Am I with the right people and in the right place? Think about the brilliant people that work for NASA and the like. They have committed their lives to being surrounded by the right people and in the right places so they can fulfill their mission. There's only a few places in our nation, in our world, that does such work. And they have committed their life to, to being in Huntington, Alabama or Houston, Texas or in Cape Canaveral, Florida. These places where they've learned and they've grown, they've researched and they've studied to be ready for the moment of launch. They've surrounded themselves with the right people and put themselves in the right places. There's an old saying, if you lay down with dogs, you rise up with fleas. 
There are too many well-meaning people that get stuck in the bad places and in bad relationships. Some of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make in life is to move away from certain people in certain places, to stop spending an amount of time or too much time with these certain people because all they seemed to do to me was bring me down, to drag me down and make me a worse person. It was some of the hardest things I've ever done. See, if you hang around somebody that gossips all the time, you probably will find yourself gossiping. If you hang around people who commit adultery all the time, you will probably find yourself doing it as well. If you hang around people who are demeaning towards others all the time, you will probably find yourself doing it as well. If you hang around bullies all the time, you probably will become a bully yourself. And the list goes on and on. And this list can also extend to places as well. If every time you go to the local watering hole, you get drunk and you find yourself making a bunch of bad decisions, stop going. If every time you go to your favorite vacation spot and you give in to your indulgence and you make bad decisions, stop going. We need to be mindful of the people and the places that we are spending the majority of our time with. Now, I hear you saying it. You said it in your mind. If you didn't turn to your your wife or your children and say it out loud. Now, Jesus hung out with tax collectors, prostitutes, and sinners. But let me remind you of something this morning. You ain't Jesus. Now, I know we need to minister to people beyond ourselves. And I know that we need to be a positive influence on the world. But we also need to be mindful that we need to be a positive influence and not let the negative uh, influence of the world influence us. It's a fine line and a difficult road to trod. So be careful. Make sure you know what you are getting into and know your personal tendencies so that you can approach life, places, and people better than ever before. See, but however, if you put yourself in the right place with the right people, your faith will be enriched and encouraged. That doesn't mean you won't make mistakes. It doesn't mean you won't sin. But the hope is that ultimately you become a better person, a better version of yourself. 1 Corinthians 15.33 reminds us, Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. The point of this is we put ourselves in the right places with the right people so that we can become more connected with God and grow in faith. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm, Proverbs 13, 20 says. So, who of you need to stop going to certain places? Or who of you may need to consider spending less time with certain people? And something else that we need to embrace in order for us to not have failure at time of launch. And this is important for us. It is okay for you to look crazy on behalf of God. The onlookers in this passage of scripture did not understand what was going on when the Holy Spirit arrived. They made fun of the people and said that they were drunk. They said they were crazy. The people of God at Pentecost looked crazy to the outsider. 
Let me be clear. The only time anyone should appear drunk is if they've had some type of medication in preparation for surgery or if they are drunk on the Holy Spirit. I am sure the first person who said, let's go to the moon, was told they were crazy. You, you have to be crazy uh, to be an astronaut. Uh, think about the first astronaut, Yuri Gagarin, going into orbit. Nobody had ever done it before. He had to be a little bit crazy to get in that little capsule to be shot up into outer space, knowing that he may not return. Any time you dream big, or do something that you've never done before, or lean into the unfamiliar, someone will think you are crazy. God is going to call many of you, all of you really, to do some crazy things in your life. And there will be people who look at you and say, don't do it. Oh, that's not very smart. Or God really didn't call you to do that. But when we have put ourselves in places and with right people and put ourselves in the right circumstances so that we are truly connected to God and we feel and know the Holy Spirit is within us, then even when people call us crazy, we can go forward in faithful obedience, even when people are scoffing at us. 2 Corinthians 5.13 says, If it seems we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. Or 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. And even Jesus in Mark chapter 3 was accused of being crazy and insane. Then Jesus entered a house and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebub. By the prince of demons, he is driving out demons, they said. Jesus was accused of being crazy. Think about all the stories in scripture. When we do things on behalf of God, it doesn't always make sense. It's not always rational to have faith. Abraham leaving Ur, Moses confronting Pharaoh, Ruth staying with Naomi, Ezekiel, well, there's too many stories about Ezekiel for me to be able to mention just one. Balaam and the donkey, Ananias going to the persecutor named Saul. Faith and obedience in God brings on some pretty crazy stuff. And it's okay. For our graduates and for those of you who are looking to launch maybe into some new endeavor in life or maybe to those who are just trying to be faithful. Hear me say this. Are you ready? Because it is time for some of you to launch. May you allow the Spirit of God first and foremost to reside within you. May you be willing to wait for as long as you need to wait. May you be prepared by putting yourself in circumstances, places, and around the right people. And may you be willing to look crazy on behalf of God. Amen and amen. Because God's Holy Spirit has been poured out upon us, 
We cannot stand by idly and not serve him. As our closing hymn reminds us, we need to always be ready and willing to go and serve the Lord with gladness in all that we do so that we might proclaim his great love to all people. And now as you go, may you be prepared to launch into the great unknown of God's mysterious goodness. And as you journey, may Christ go before you, come behind you, and reside within you from now till forevermore. And now let us pray as our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Okay, do I need to ABCD? No. We're good? Okay, I am ready whenever you are. Are you clapping or just start? Go ahead. Okay. That's so weird to just like start talking. <laughs> okay, now I gotta collect myself. Okay. Uh, no, it's, it's All right. <laughs> All right. Good morning. 